Today I'm going to be doing a drawing of Zeus. Zeus is the four-armed god in a book called Dread Gods that is produced by Ominous Press, a comic book company I'm a partner in. Zeus is a really big dude, so he's going to take up most of this drawing uh, space on the paper. I'm using a lead holder with HB lead. Um, I always start with the torso and then go to the head and then the arms. You can see I'm sketching in the arms now, uh, the top arms out of the four that he has. He's kind of raging here. He's a, he's a little angry. Zeus isn't a happy fellow. Um, so here I am sketching in the arms. I always start with basic shapes, cylinders, and such because the basic shapes are the foundation of any good figure drawing. Now I'm sketching in his top pectoral muscles. He has two sets of pectoral muscles, once again, because he has four arms. So I'm sketching those in lightly. Once again, trying to pay attention to the basic shapes and the anatomy as I go along. Here we've progressed forward to where his lower body is coming into shape better. His lower torso, I should say. That's his latissimus muscle I just did. Now I'm drawing the part, a little bit of his legs that you'll see. You're not going to see too much of his legs. So just sketching those in roughly. Going back in, tightening up the latissimus. Um, Zeus is such a big guy, the anatomy is very important. So I really try and focus on uh, good anatomy when I'm drawing. I'm kind of a, I'm an anatomy buff. Sometimes my obsessive compulsive disorder gets the better of me and I'll spend uh, extreme amounts of time on one part of the body. But with this being a sketch, I'm just trying to, you know, do something that's kind of cool and get it down to, to show you my process. It's pretty sketchy. Uh, my stuff is kind of loose at first, but I'm just trying to, you know, get the drawing down. I was working on his hand and a fist there. I'm working on his forearm here, his other hand clenched in a fist coming forward some getting the fingers down and the knuckles. Uh, but you can see the underlying basic shape that I started with and then I'm just cutting into it for the fingers and the rest of the hand, the underlying palm that you can't see, uh, the bones on top of his hand. Now going back into his forearm. I've progressed a little further on the sketch. I'm tightening up the forearm that's raised above his head, his right side, our left, going back into the pecs. And I'm just trying to tighten the drawing up, adding a little more muscle details as I go along. Uh, it still has a little ways to go before it's ready to ink. Sketching in his hand here. Those are the bones of his thumb, the outline of his fist. A lot of stuff I can do as a shortcut because I've been drawing for so long. For beginners, I wouldn't take shortcuts. Obviously, you're going to want to spend more time with the construction and the underlying shapes and forms. And it's kind of like crawling before you can walk and walking before you can run. You have to take into account uh, all the, the underdrawing first before you can get into the nice, fancy, finished detail. Seuss doesn't wear much in terms of a costume. He has these cool shoulder pads and armbands, and he has a band that goes around his, his the top of his hand and underneath his palm. And he pretty much has a belt that has a different type of shape to it. And that's about all he wears. Uh, he has pants, of course, which if this was going to be color, you'd be able to see. But I'm just sketching in the details of his shoulder pads. I'm almost at the stage where I'm going to start inking the drawing, but I need to get in the shoulder pads first before I can do that, just to finish costume details. And once those are done, I can, uh, I can start inking it. I like to tighten up the face a little more than anything else before I start inking because the face is one of the most important things on a figure. It's something that we as people are used to looking at every day when we talk to people so you want to make that nice and tight now i'm starting the inking using a 
Pentel Stylo Sketch Pen. It's kind of like a nib. It has a little flex to it depending on how much pressure you apply, but not too much. So I don't apply a lot of pressure. Um, it's really good for fine details, so I'm kind of just outlining different areas of the figure, and as I go through this, you'll see time jumps because it's just a lot of outlining with this pen that I'm doing. I like to work on the head. is one of the first areas because once again it's the most important and I like to just get that out of the way. I'll use a template with a fine point sharpie to do the perfect circles and such on his costume. I could freehand them but I'd rather have them nice and precise and that's what templates are for and since I have such an array of templates next to my desk I might as well put them to use. I'm now using a Pilot Namiki fountain pen that has a flexible hooded nib that can give you a variety of line variation depending on the amount of pressure you use when inking with it. It's an extra fine point, so you're not going to get a really fat line out of it when you press down on it, but you can get a little line weight variation from it. Now I'm using a, a Faber-Castell pit brush pen to kind of lay in the chunky black areas for the shadows on his body. Uh, once again, he's a very large guy, big muscles, so this will really help define the muscle and anatomy on the figure. As the drawing comes along, you'll, you'll definitely be able to see the different cuts and striations in his muscles. We're a little further along. You can see I've added some more shadows underneath his arms on the bottom of his triceps. Uh, I'm trying to define more of the muscles on his forearms and his hands. You can see I've delineated his chest pectoral muscles. When I say the figure is cut, what I mean by that is you can see more of the individual striations in the individual muscles. So for instance, his pectorals, you can definitely see some more of the cuts that make up the mass of the pectoral muscle. Those are the side little ribcage serratus muscles I've indicated. Now I'm going in and defining his abdominal muscles to really show that this is a, a really ripped big guy. If I smoothed them out more, and what I mean by smoothing them out would be not showing nearly as many uh, cuts on him. You know, the average person, you can't, for instance, see a six pack. But on a guy like this, he's uh, he probably only has like, you know, 2% body fat. So now I'm using the brush pen and I'm kind of beefing up the outline of the figure to give it a little weight. If I left that thin line that I originally did around the figure, he just wouldn't have a beefiness and weight to him. So by adding this thickness to the outline, it gives a sense of weight and mass to his figure, which for a big guy like this is very important. You definitely want him to, to have a sense of weight to his figure. And this is what I would consider a convention sketch. Uh, when I do my actual artwork for comic books, I'll use a real brush that I dip in ink. But for conventions, I can't take all that stuff with me, so I use these nice brush pens and different tools that you've seen me use on this. And I also want to point out that this video drawing is only about 11 minutes long, but this actual piece from start to finish took me about two hours. So I don't want you to think I'm super fast because I'm not. Now I'm going back in with the, the Pilot Namiki fountain pen and doing a little more rendering, a little fine line rendering off of some of the black areas just to, just to soften it some, soften the area some. You know, working on the 
veins in his neck because he's raging so much. Those are pulling really tight over top of the sternomastoids. Just tightening up a little rendering. You can see the fine lines that I did with this pen. You know, I'm just kind of doing last touch-ups and clean-ups. I'm using my Sharpie to, you know, my fine point Sharpie to add a little bit more feathering as well. It gives a different look than the, the Pilot Namiki fountain pen that I was using before. Just softens, softens the, uh, the black areas with these fine lines. Now I use my kneaded eraser, give it a few seconds to dry, and I, I love my kneaded eraser for erasing my drawings because as you can see, I can mold it into different shapes. Once it's erased, I'll add a little more line work that I see it might need. And then that's it. Here's the final drawing of Zeus.